So, uh, thank you for being still here instead of having gone to sleep after lunch. Um, I will speak about uh, family ties and letter orders. Letter orders are a peculiar kind of administrative text of uh, this of the time in Mesopotamia. And then uh, disguised as a letter, so we have a sender that uh, writes to a receiver asking to perform a particular task, usually to uh, deliver uh, materials or to free a person. So it is an administrative text that uh, actually it looks like a letter. No. Yes. Okay. The first traces of this kind of text can be found already during the early dynastic period, and their histoire occurred only a few centuries later during the Euclidean period, after which it became less common. During the last periods of the classical Mesopotamian history, that orders were, went through a kind of renaissance. Uh, after the uh, renaissance, uh, they were just increasingly greatly, uh, both in the late Babylonian time and during the Achaemenid and Hellenistic domination. During the U3 uh, period, object of this paper, letter orders assumed a peculiar structure that is different from other periods. An ideal example has been reconstructed through the comparison of all the known specimens. This composed the way you can see in the example here. Uh, these documents present uh, three principal sections the heading, the heading, the body, and the conclusion, each one of which can be subdivided into more subsections the sender and the receiver, the formative part and order, now the formative part, mentally. Uh, the exhortation, the date, and the indication of the seal. The PN stands for personal name. Um, a bit external to textual analysis is uh, uh, the actual sealing, while literally external is the envelope. Um, as you can see, we have several personal names here repeated uh, in a single letter, and the names could be given many more if the letter is dealing with uh, workers. So we have a list of uh, personal names, maybe also 10 people in a single letter. Here you can see a quick comparison between examples from early dynastic, year 3, and late Babylonian orders. In all of them, it is really clear that the writer had the intention to make the receiver do something for him, be it measuring broadly, I hope you can read, yes, or uh, give uh, um, mixed products or give also oil. Some quick data about the uh, sources. The total of known that orders belonging to the 21st century BC is 581. The number is not high as that of other kinds of texts like receipts or deliveries, but still high enough to offer a great lexical variety. That orders have been found in 11 different cities, some in core of Sumeria, uh, land like Gizu, Uma, and some a bit far away, like Mari, that's quite far away, and uh, Ishuna or Susa, that's quite uh, near, but from another culture, we can say. Uh, Gizu, Uma, and Nippur alone are the origin of the 82% of documents. So these documents are scattered, but not so much scattered. All the small number of texts, like 11%, bears a, bear a date, but letters are enough to cover a period of 40 years. We can assume that more or less all these texts were written in half a century. The content of this text can be categorized in nine sections, depending on the order requested. Commercial, attentive, economic, administrative, agricultural, juridical, and words, movement, or other verbs. As you can see from the slide, the commercial ambit alone contains two thirds of all orders of the corpus. The primary use of these letters, or administrative text, was to request the delivery of products, or manpower. All this preamble is necessary to understand the choice of the sources. Let orders form a corpus that is at the same time not too big and expressive, but still large enough to find correlation and references. The geographical and chronological settings are sufficiently varied, but still moderate. 
The lexicon, both for verbs and substantives, is incredibly rich. The amount of personal names, as we will see short, is very high. That orders the form of corpus that is coherent, compact and reliable, where we can research trusting our results. And the 581 documents that form the lab orders corpus, there are 791 different personal names, for a total of 1,699 personal names. That means that on average, every text has almost three names in it. One could think that this number is quite low, since so one imagine that every letter has a sender and a receiver, but actually senders are almost never attested in this text, and also the seals are not so much diffused. So three reasonably different personal names per text is quite a high number for text or that on average have eight lines or nine lines. These numbers tell us also that uh, every name is repeated a bit more than two times. In this case, the number is really low because it's really hard to say something about a person that appears only twice, maybe without any title or other indication. Luckily, the average is just a concept, and the names are unevenly divided. We have 70 names that are repeated more than five times, uh, up to 41 times in one case, and a lot of names that appear only once. This um, difference allows us to gather more information about people uh, who appear more because we have more text at our disposition. Our main problem is to recognize if two attestation refers to the same person. It is important to stress that talking about the root three period, there is no who's who or any other prosopographic of index, and only two substantial volumes about this subject are more similar to the list of names than to identity researches. As you will know, in ancient pre-Roman society, the use of second name or subname was extremely rare, except for ruling families. There are examples of clan names or tribal names, but they were used mostly when the subject was clearly different from all the other, like now I could be the nearly the Italian, because I'm the only Italian uh, guy speaking here. Papal names were more common, but their use remained in all sporadic. In Sumerian, they were used in the form Dumu, that means son. So, uh, Daniele Dumu Renato is Daniele's son of Renato. Therefore, we have several people sharing their name, but most of the time we don't know if they are the same people, the same person, or just two homonyms. The strongest clue we have to recognize if two names refer to the same person or to homonyms is patronym. Two people can share name, job, CD and friends, but it's extremely unlikely that two homonyms have also homonymous fathers. At the same time, if two homonyms have different fathers' names, they are for sure not the same person. Other identification or diversification criteria, although weaker, are the same job or the same title, the same city that's a bit generic, but sometimes it could help, the same time period here not so much applicable because we have 50 years, so all of these people live more or less in the same period. Common relationships, not only uh, regarding the family, but also other people with whom the subject could work with or relate to. And even similar action, let's say if a certain name is always connected with that or commerce, probably it's always the same person, or maybe most of the time it's the same person, uh, a merchant of leather. No this criteria, uh, nevertheless, can assure us that two names refer to same, the same person, since two, let's say, who remain, could well live in the same city in, during the same year, and have the same job, maybe a common job, and thus relating with the same people. Obviously, the more similarities are, the more probable is that they are one single person. On the other side, sometimes different job, title or city are not enough to differentiate between homonyms, since the worker could change his job or his residence, and an official could progress and deserve a higher title. So let's end to the actual reconstruction of the families. I will bring an example for every major city of the corpus, Gilsu, Nipur, Kutsishtagan, and Uma. The best case happens when a single text is enough to reconstruct a family or a good part of it. 
letter at the end A7 for, uh, from if so reads, after you will have spoken with Nami, may he not retain into custody Siga Kalama and Urmes, sons of Lugal Kabina, attendants of the temple of Ninegal in the shipyard. We can't relate these people to anyone else in the corpus. This single document suffices to recognize a family composed of a father and two brothers, and informs us that the two had the same job, so most probably the father was bound to the same temple, since these two sons were together in the same place. And the vast majority of the cases have less data orders are not enough to reconstruct the family. Still, they can contain details that help us shape a bigger image. Here is an automatic example. There are two letters coming from Nippur referring to Namzi Dharma, governor of the city. He is a living figure, and all we know about him from these texts is that also his father, Urnangal, had been governor. Searching the corpus, we can find another text coming from the same city that reports the name of another governor, Dada, son of Urnangal. Dada is the youngest brother of Namzi Dharma. Although this relationship is never attested directly in corpus, widening the researches also to other kinds of texts, one can discover that the two brothers are part of a very important dynasty because also their grandfather, Lugal Engardu, was governor. So the family gave up to the city at least four governors in a row. Even if talking about uh, famous personalities, so sometimes these texts can give us just details. The two different seals found on the two texts of Namzitana show us the evolution of his career, from civil scribe to governor. But the reconstruction of his important family is partially out of reach if we limit our analysis only to left borders. Excluding for a moment the father and son relationship, that is the base of almost all our reconstructions, mothers appear too in left borders, although scarcely. Quite strange their presence is concentrated in one single text where four out of five mothers of corpus appear. Letter. Letter out uh, of the Italian 1732 presents a list of work days assigned to various people, among which also some women identified as mother of the mother of Dana, the mother of Lu Ashman, the mother of Shankar, and the mother of M. Atsu. Being in general so few the station of mothers and wives, it would be really interesting to find husbands of these uh, ladies, or more easily the fathers of these men. Unfortunately, no one of them but Dada appears anymore in corpus, and there are not enough information to link this man with people appearing in other documents, since we don't know anything about them, just they were son of a mother. Interestingly, the same concentration valid for the third, third mother here applies also for brothers. This time is named three times in a single text, dealing with restitutive measures. Only once is attested, instead, the term Ni Nine, sister, referring to Sima Pishtaran, sister of King Ebisim. Two families meet in text uh, uh, IGT 3. 6511, where the writer, that has no name, asks to the wife of Urbao, superior of Lubminshur, to release his brother. That ends uh, with a peculiar exhortation, who is like my mother, that is a modification of the usual who is like my brother, because he was writing to a female. Here we can clearly identify two families, but in these two families, we have only one person with a name. The other three characters have no names. An example of a successful paternal figure is represented by one Lubin Kirsu from Puslishdagen, who appears in ten letters, large base for our analysis. We have to notice that he never acts in first person, being only mentioned in his son's ceilings. These present themselves as Abakala or Duga or Urkuruna, scribe, son of Lugin Gipsu, and the patronymic is followed by a father's title. The three seals belong to subsequent periods, from the reign of Amarsuan to the first years of Ebesim, giving us an idea of the age order of the sons. 
the title of Louis Dirceau changes, and we can understand that he started his career as a veterinarian, and later he became the shepherd of the Nakatu, one of the most important institutions of the city. It lies in just letter order, so, and not even text where Louis Dirceau is actively participating, one can reconstruct his family, his career, and the development of both. The main family we can reconstruct to let orders is actually the most important family of Uma, who gave the city three governors and various high officials. The scribe named Aratu appears in 13 let orders, almost all coming from Uma. Almost all coming from Uma. In the text, he appears only to a silly. Reading Aratu, scribe, son of Ulmiga, chief cattle administrator. He seems to be a common scribe, but his father is a living personality in the city. Note that not all the texts pertaining to him, as I told before, come from the same city. So the geographic criterion of identification is not always so strict. And we know that these different texts are from the same person, even if the city is different, because he has the same father name, and he makes most of the same things in letters. In only one letter appears instead Lucalla, an scribe. Even if he appears only to his seal, being the son of Ornica, chief Catholic stranger, is enough for us to include him in this family as brother of Aradu. More, more tested is Ayakala, who appears in nine other orders from Oma. He too appears only in his seals which are more than one, and in his total seal, similar to the previous ones, written Ayakala, scribe, son of Oliga, chief cattle administrator. Afterwards, he changed his signature, showing a different test. Amar Suem, strong man, king of Ur, king of the four quarters, Ayakala, governor of Uma, is your servant. Later, he adapted his seal to the political changes, so the term himself, not servant of Amor Suen, but of Shu Suen, the subsequent king. Since the patronymic is attested only in six of these texts, and even his name is written differently, A Kalla or A A Kalla, we have to rely also on other elements to identify him. In particular, here, the key is the activity uh, carried out in the letters, always hindering to root and read delivery. The only connecting element of these people is Urmiga, a real godfather. He appears in a good 20 texts, always in the series of his songs. The single most popular person of the corpus uh, never appears in first person and has no contact with anybody. He is only mentioned in other people's seals. Nevertheless, his importance is crucial. In other letter orders, in fact, other songs of him appear, like Urlisi. Now, the important governor of Uma, tested in 12 texts, and a fa uh, father of Louis Macher. And ur -E, chief health administrator, so like his father, attested in 10 texts, and father of another, Lucalba. None of them appeared with a patronymic, so their lineage can be reconstructed only thanks to texts external to the corpus. So they are in less orders, but they not declare themselves as songs of Bukhniga, and we, we have no clue just looking to our corpus. After this quick overview, you can have an idea of